In this video, I'm going to show you a grade school art technique that can make your models look worse. For the better. It is too hot up here today, so no feds. Sorry. So, if you've been watching any of my live streams on Twitch recently, you will have seen me paint a lot of different kinds of, well, let's just say grungy looking models. I've got some really beat up Necrons. I've got some, you know, sort of dirty rat boy, you know, Skaven plague monks. And uh, right now uh, I'm nearly finished with a whole bunch of Nurgle. So I have a tendency to paint things for whatever reason, my particular interest goes towards the grungy, the, um, the dirty, the corroded, and that kind of stuff. And because that's kind of my jam, I've got some, I guess, background in it, and I wanted to share a little bit of it. Kind of a fun little technique, which is maybe an advanced beginner technique, but maybe not. Anyway, watch. When I was in grade school, or maybe middle school, which around my neck of the woods is grades six, seven, eight, we in art class got into something called pointillism. And what pointillism is, you take a pen, like a felt tip marker or something like that, and um, you make little dots. And you don't just make little dots to make dots, you make dots to make a picture, right? It's kind of like if you ever look at a magazine or a newspaper article. You guys remember newspapers? Yeah. Anyway, if you look real close, maybe with a magnifier, you will see they are made up of dots, which are called halftone in the printing industry. Now, those dots are generally in a kind of perfect sort of grid shape and they make up as you back away from that group of dots they make a picture and then you can see what the picture is and it's because printers can't print in like grays and in between colors they can only print either a color or no color and by varying the size of the dots down to almost not quite microscopic but a very very small level all of a sudden pictures look like they're full color pictures in magazines and stuff like that if you get a picture from the camera store that's a different story those aren't made up of dots that's a totally different process it's a chemical process but the, to print onto paper you have to use dots if you want to get what looks like a full color photograph right when we're painting, we can actually blend colors. We can do something that magazines and newspapers can't. We can wet blend or lay down lots and lots of glazes to build up a blend. There's lots of things that we can do. But as I've said in some videos previously, like, you know, don't necessarily worry about wet blending when you're a beginner. Pachow, watch that one. Um, don't particularly worry about wet blending when you're a beginner. So what do you do if you want to get some sort of kind of variation so your models don't look all just one color the same well over the years i've gone back to that pointillism kind of you know exercise that i did in school and instead of just using black dots on white paper to make a picture of a x29 uh, jet which i think was the first pointillism thing I, I ever did and i don't have a picture of it here uh because i who knows where it ever ended up i do wish i still had it but I used that pointillism stuff, which I loved in school, to figure out ways to make kind of corrosion and, 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 and weird techniques, weird textures onto metals in my painting. And it's literally just taking your brush, and you generally don't want to use a brand new um, natural hair perfect brush. You want to use probably a, a, you know, a synthetic brush, maybe something a little cheap, but still comes to a decent enough point. And you're going to basically just put some stuff on there and just poke, 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 poke. And that's literally about it. Now, there is obviously a little bit more than that when I say it's literally about it. But that's the actual maneuver, is you are literally just poking and trying to make little dots in certain areas on the model, and you're using certain paints. And those certain areas and those certain paints, that's the extra kind of bit that makes it beyond just, you know, poke, poke, poke. The thing that has really brought me back into stippling, frankly, is uh, contrast paints. The contrast paints from Games Workshop, which are those special kind of paints that you are supposed to basically just one thick coat over the entire model to make it so you can paint models very quickly. And some people can do it and some people can't. And I did a video about contrast paints and what I think about them after a year of using them. Pachow. And I like them, but I use them in very specific ways. And one of the ways I catch myself using contrast paints all the time now is using the stippling technique when I am painting something that is metal and is supposed to look corroded or something that is maybe 
gross, you know, like a Nurgle something or other, and is supposed to look kind of spotty and just mottled and bumpy and things like that. And it is taking colors and going down kind of into the corners on metal and little, you know, you've got a piece of armor, but down in the bottom part, we want it to be darker and corroded because that's where the rust is. Plus it's also down low and not up high. So the light's not hitting it as much. And you just kind of get in there and just poke at it and you build up as you press harder, you get bigger dots. And if you press lighter, you get slightly smaller dots. And as you kind of build up and layer, you can make something look almost textured, even though it's basically flat paint right on top of a flat surface. You can still give it a texture. If you look at this uh, Nurgle banner on my uh, Blightlord here, it looks real bumpy and textured, but it is literally just a silver spray that I laid down on top of it. And then over that, uh, you know, and I mean, by on top of it, I mean on top of the primer after I got done just priming it black, I, silver spray. And then later on when I was painting, it was just um, some greens from, from contrast, some browns from contrast, a couple little oranges in there to get it to be almost like a slightly lighter rust, and just stippling and spotting. Wasn't using a sponge, wasn't using any other kind of special tool, just using a thin little brush like this. And so it takes time, obviously, to fill up larger spaces, but the effect you kind of can't argue with. So is it only good for things that are supposed to be like rusty metal and things thusly? Well, it does work quite well on those types of things. Axes, swords, all kinds of things. You know, the, the good guys, such as they are in whatever situation, generally polish their swords and get things real smooth and, and whatever. Whereas the, the evil people have a tendency to leave their swords kind of eh, in, in disrepair. And so that's how you paint those things, in my opinion, is you go back and you put in some spots and things like that. You might throw some washes down as well to give larger areas that kind of get darkened down and kind of streaky. But when you want little spots to get modeled, what you want to do is you want to get in there with your brush and poke in the different colors, darker colors, maybe some lighter colors, um, not lighter than the color you're going over because most likely the color you're going over is quite light, like a silver or maybe a brass or something like that. But to get in there and really kind of go in and put in those little spots really makes not only the, it gives you a fade without having to learn how to wet blend and you're using contrast colors which are already kind of transparent so you're building it up over time and it's harder to screw it up real quick it takes a good long time to screw it up if you're going to go down that road and you're probably going to notice before you get there and then hopefully be able to correct but it also just allows you to have still the color coming through as well if you were to stipple and and, and had a speckle and model this stuff with an opaque paint it kind of comes across differently then. You can do it, but it then has to be kind of to some degree looking like it is paint flaking off of the surface and there's like brown rust underneath. You wouldn't use a lighter color. I have gone through and stippled to make something look like it's rust where the paint has flaked away. You can do that. But what I'm talking about here and using contrast is to actually make the material itself look worn and dirty by doing this. That's the look you're looking for. But what if you want to make people look dirty? Well, you can give it a try, and it depends on how dirty you want to go. Generally, people that you are painting, whatever they might be from whatever skin tone, very, very dark to very, very pale, anything along those lines, if you're trying to get blends and variation, you're probably going to want those blends to be smoother. So you're either going to use some sort of xenothal highlight or some sort of glazing or wet blending or any of those different techniques if you want to go down that road. But if you are trying to make a creature look different like that. Well, creatures can be spotty all day long. People generally aren't spotty. Freckles don't count because they're so very, very small in comparison to a person who's only this tall. You wouldn't paint freckles on a person like that. And freckles are cool. But I'm talking about I'm a horrible swamp monster and I'm covered in mottled spots of different colors and things like that. Or I'm a horrible Nurgle demon or I'm a rotten zombie or something along those lines. In those situations, then the modeling can also work quite well. Again, I would tell you to use transparent colors, preferably maybe um, you could use uh, contrast colors. You could use washes as well, but they will take longer to kind of build up because they are so much more transparent than most of the um, you know contrast colors from Games Workshop. And some of the contrast colors from Games Workshop are much more opaque than the other ones. If you get into like Wildwood and Black Templar and some of those colors, they are much more opaque than say Agoros Dunes or Skeleton Horde or Grift Charger Orange or any of those. So you kind of keep track of that. Maybe even test on a spot, maybe not on the model or you know, test on the back of your thumb. If you've been watching people on Twitch paint a lot, very frequently you see the, 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 the thumb of many colors where people are not only just testing color, but also just kind of repointing their 
their brush and everything like that. Do that kind of stuff when you are testing to make sure that you don't end up putting a whole bunch of weird spots on a model that make it look real weird and janky because as it turns out, models aren't half-toned like the newspaper. So try out some stippling and get a cool modeled kind of texture on one of your next uh, figures, whether it's uh, some old corroded sword or an axe, or maybe it's uh, corroded armor on a skeleton who's coming out of the graveyard, or maybe it's even something on flesh, like it's a, uh, it's a real kind of fat and sort of squishy, uh, you know, Nurgle demon or, 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 or anything like that. Um, I've got a Glotkin model that I bought um, years ago, and one of these days, I'm going to paint that big, big, big boy. Well, he's actually a, several boys, but, and when I do, I'm going to be doing, he's going to be spotty. He's just going to be covered in spots because I really want him to look like that. Like the one that they painted, he's kind of smooth and I want him to look real, almost bumpy, but definitely just spotty and, and, and disturbing because that's what we're really looking for in a lot of our models is to disturb people. So if you want to make metal, whether it's in a piece of terrain, like an old, um, a shipping container, or if it's on a sword, or if it's on uh, the side of a spaceship, or anything along those lines, you want to make it look corroded, then I would take contrast paints and a brush and start to pointillizing on, you know, little areas here and there, corners, edges, places where it might get rusty, you know, and maybe use some wash if you want to make it even more, you know, subtle and that kind of stuff. And, uh, and see what you get, because I think you'll be happy. And it's not a difficult process. It doesn't take nearly as much practice or experience as something like wet blending. But you can still get a nice looking effect that actually enhances the surface of the model because of the texture, because your eye is going to see texture where there's not texture. And uh, when you make your eye get you know deceived by the stuff that you're painting, you're basically moving in the right direction.